Hassan Janabi is back in Sydney for a brief holiday with his family after more than a year in Iraq. It was a journey that started as the realization of a lifelong dream, but turned into a nightmare. It's going to be a real holiday. <laughs> the challenges are still there, uh, but it's far more dangerous. I mean, uh, it, it's just cheap killing. I first met Hassan when he arrived in Baghdad, just a few weeks after George Bush declared the war officially over. Look at this. A water engineer from the Sydney Catchment Authority, Hassan was one of many Iraqi exiles hand-picked to help with the reconstruction of his homeland. The feeling that you are back home is, is beyond imagination, beyond description. I cannot describe it. Um, yeah, this is, this is the first day, the first morning in Baghdad since 1979. Guess where I am now? <laughs> the presidential palace. <laughs> she doesn't believe me. As a Shiite and a student activist, Hassan would have been killed for walking where he is now. Are there any sheets going to be giving us something? Yeah, there's, there's sheets The first somewhere. weeks of Hassan's stay were chaotic, but filled yeah, with hope. There's, there's... He thought he would only be needed here for a few months, but ended up staying for over a year. Can you believe this? Just tell me, can you believe this? I'm back! <laughs> so Hassan, what are you most looking forward to? Uh, what are you most looking forward to? Here? Yeah. To drink, <laughs> to drink wine with my family, with my friends. It is really very exciting to be here. I became scared with time. The last month was very, very scary. And I thought I, I would be killed any, um, any minute, basically. That feeling, uh, that feeling was uh, very, very frightening. But there was no, uh, no way out. There was no escape. And you're going to go back? I am. Yes. Hassan had only been at work for a few days before it became obvious the Americans didn't have much of a plan to get his country back on its feet. It's their government that led them into this pro problem, not us. We, we, we're actually helping them get out of it and they need to pull themselves by the bootstraps. Hassan thinks this lack of planning caused today's instability in Iraq. You can only cry, right? What else you can do? I think it took some time for the um, Americans to realize that the security of the country is directly related to the economy, to the jobs. I think it took longer than it should be. Uh, probably the jobs, uh, economic growth and jobs for the people is, uh, is, the, main, is the main reason, I think, for the so-called insurgency. I'm still adjusting to uh, civilized life. Back there, we drive on red light. You drive on the curb, the wrong side, no problem. As long as you get to the destination, that's just fine. <laughs> yeah, I, I think my life is getting uh, uh, a little bit more complicated. Uh, I'm not a pragmatic politician or some sort. I'm, uh, I always been a pacifist, but this is very tough uh, for me. The uh, magnitude of the changes that's happening every day in front of your eyes is, is so big. Uh, you, need, you, need, you, you need this internal transformation to happen for you to comprehend and, and to stay a normal person. The transformation began 15 months ago when Hassan saw his brothers and sisters for the first time in 25 years.
Hassan hasn't been able to see his family for months. They live in a village outside Najaf, the holy city, which has recently been reduced to rubble. The area is a no-go zone for foreigners or exiles, who, like Hassan, are working with the new regime. But in January this year, before Najaf blew up, Hassan brought his wife and three sons from Australia to meet the extended family. It was when before I went, I thought it'd be like you know, pretty bad, you know, crummy. But it was a lot better than I expected. In what way? A lot of love, mm. a lot of family. I'm probably gonna cry now. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Check. So I even face and mm, hold the gun. Yeah. That's you. Yeah, and that's a real AK-47. What was that, AK-47? It was a real one. Yeah? Real. Second, number three. Okay, two. His family had a shocking introduction to the country Hassan had mythologized. Driving into Iraq, they were robbed by armed bandits. Unfortunately, it started with a big hiccup where the kids get, uh, where the entire family, I mean, we got ambushed on on the way near Fallujah, on the way to Baghdad, that was the yep. first day that we got uh, basically uh, uh, chased by uh, another car and then ordered to stop. So the, our driver stopped. He could not, uh, he could not escape. And so they pulled the machine guns and, and uh, pistols at me and my son, and they demanded the money. So it was horrible, uh, horrible experience. But then they got adjusted very. Uh, very soon and, and they settled with the, the extended family very well and I think they like it, don't you Baba? Huh? Didn't you like the uh, being in Iraq and the yeah. family? Yeah, but the first experience was zero out of a hundred. Zero out of a hundred? <laughs> Why? Because they even asked me for money. <laughs> for a quarter of a century, Hassan's dream was to see an Iraq without Saddam Hussein. Now he can't imagine that Iraq might be anything other than the happy democracy that was promised. You've got the, the bad and the worse. What we had under Saddam was the worst that could happen to any human being, to any... And there, there was no political system like, like Iraq. I, I'm not sure about Pol Pot in, in Cambodia. But this is, this is the worst thing that could ever happen to Iraq. That was Iraq under Saddam's regime. Now Saddam is gone. We've got new people there, new factors, new players on the, on the uh, political uh, uh, stage in Iraq. But we can deal with them. It's very easy to deal with them. So you're saying it was so bad then, it's okay to deal with the bad stuff now because it can't be as bad as it was? That's right, yes. But people are now being taken hostage daily. And with his connections to the new regime, Hassan is a prime target. His holiday with his family is over. Returning this time is an act of faith. If Hassan acknowledged the gravity of the crisis in Iraq, he may have to accept that his dream is over. You get scared, Hassan? Most recently, yes, before I left Iraq, the last month or, or six months, uh, I, I started to feel a little bit worried, uh, maybe Maybe the reason for that, not only the intensity of the bombings, but uh, that, uh, you know, that call inside that I want to see my family and it's gonna happen within one month. And uh, I started to feel that maybe, oh, maybe within this month, something's gonna happen. I'm not gonna see my kids and my wife. So this affected me uh, a little and I, I, get, uh, I get a little scared of things. <laughs> Just a little bit.